A truck has overturned. Acid has sprayed over people and cars. We need help urgently. At least 18 people have died. Send the entire reserve to the scene. In February of 2019, a truck loaded with sulfuric acid failed to reach the Mutanda mine, a copper and cobalt deposit in the southeast of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The acid spill melted cars and asphalt, turning metal, bitumen, and human flesh into a single mass. There was no escape even on the side of the road. The acid vapor burned out lungs and eyes, and those who were lucky enough to save their lives were left disabled. But now, sulfuric acid will seem like table vinegar to you. If there had been enough fluoroantimonic acid in the truck's tank, it might have burned through our planet. This is used in the chemical industry, and it could also be used to make a real chemical apocalypse. But I have an idea for how to use this monstrous power for a noble purpose. Saving the Earth from garbage. Dissolving it all to hell. Fluoroantimonic acid is more than a billion times stronger than the purest sulfuric acid. It instantly dissolves steel, concrete, glass, and of course, any garbage. It would be fun to replace the hydrochloric acid in our stomachs with fluoroantimonic acid. Then you could eat anything and digest nails and plastic packaging. But you'd have to have a Teflon stomach to do that. And most importantly, you couldn't drink water, in general, ever. And all because fluoroantimonic acid has several characteristics that distinguish it from others. If a couple of drops of this acid got on your hand, in a matter of seconds, it would burn through any workwear, gloves, overalls, and reach the skin. Of course, you have already guessed that a chemical burn and extreme pain would await you. Your skin would instantly dissolve, and it would begin melting the muscles and tendons. But then something unexpected would happen. In addition to all of this, the acid would begin to boil, steam rising from your skin. First, you would smell the cooked meat, and then the toxic gas would hit your nostrils. From the pain shock, your brain would shut down in a minute. Now you know that fluoroantimonic acid, unlike others, doesn't just dissolve all materials, but also reacts violently with water with the release of heat and gaseous fluorine. Since your body's tissues are made up of two-thirds water, the acid would first boil all the moisture in them before dissolving them, and then release the toxic fluoride under pressure as a product of a chemical reaction. If there was more acid, your hand would completely dissolve in just six minutes. The skin would disappear almost instantly, followed by the muscles and bones. But a guaranteed fatal outcome within the first minute would prevent you from enjoying this spectacle. And even if you didn't lose consciousness in the first few seconds, the toxic fluoride would kill you as soon as the air in your lungs ran out and you had to inhale the poisoned atmosphere. If the acid was a whole pool, it would take only 15 minutes to boil and dissolve your body completely. Skin, muscles, internal organs, and bones. Fortunately, death would come almost instantly, as soon as you made the plunge. By the way, I'll soon need such pools to dissolve garbage, but what to build them from? Because they'll quickly melt in the super acid. There's one solution. For the storage of fluoroantimonic acid, only Teflon containers can be used. Teflon is based on hydrogen fluoride, the same component the acid itself contains, which allows it to withstand an incredibly aggressive environment. 
However, even if I managed to build a multi-mile wide Teflon pool, there'd be another problem. You already know which one. If you simply submerged the garbage in our super caustic liquid, the acid would react with the moisture, and we would get an instant increase in temperature and pressure. The garbage wouldn't have time to dissolve, as it'd be scattered by a thermal explosion along with the remnants of boiling acid and clouds of toxic gas. I think that before we begin to rid humanity of garbage with super acid, we should assess the risks and develop safety rules. For example, what would we do when the accident that you saw at the beginning of the video repeated itself and a truck with fluoroantimonic acid, not sulfuric acid, overturned? This time, there would be significantly more deaths than you saw in the Congo, as well as blindness, gas poisoning, chemical burns for those who are lucky to survive. To neutralize the acid, you'd have to fill the spill site with tons of lime, which in itself is poisonous and harmful to all living things. Dozens of fog nozzles would flood what remained with water to neutralize the chemical compounds that would deeply permeate the soil. Reacting with water, the acid would release hundreds of cubic feet of toxic fluoride gas into the atmosphere. It would require the evacuation of all surrounding settlements and the accident site would remain a poisoned spot for a long time where nothing could grow and live. But this would still be the best option. What if the emergency services weren't prepared for a local apocalypse when recycling garbage and the acid continued to burn and dissolve the earth? The number of victims, of course, would be much higher. But I'll say right away, no, the acid would not burn through the planet. Reacting with the moisture in the soil or reaching the aquifer, the acid would give us a second Chernobyl. It would poison the air with fluoride gas, turn dozens of acres of land into a scorched desert for decades, but it wouldn't reach deep into the earth. The water would boil away along with the acid, and the planet's atmosphere would eventually absorb all the toxic gas. So, it seems that we'd be able to cope with any accidents and acid leaks. Although, from the point of view of ecology, all this wouldn't be so attractive. But even if we planned all the transportation with absolute safety, the difficulties will have just begun. To start, you'd have to dissolve only such garbage that doesn't contain moisture. Glass, polymers, plastic, metal. For this, we'd need a giant screening plant for separation of the right kinds of garbage and tens of thousands of workers. Then it would be necessary to apply dewatering technology for ordinary types of garbage before dissolving it. First, we'd have to evaporate all the water or squeeze it out on giant centrifuges. We'd have to build huge factories for the preparation of garbage. By the way, Special containers for dissolution would have to hold huge volumes of millions of cubic feet, special security systems, and, most importantly, a full Teflon coating. If an accident with such a pool still happened, well, this isn't some tank truck. Acid would end up in rivers, seas, and oceans. In millions of tons of acid, boiling water and fluoride gas would cause a catastrophe that would make mountains of garbage seem like an ecological paradise. It's obvious that the construction of giant marshalling yards, huge plants for dewatering garbage, and thousands of colossal Teflon pools with acid would require an investment of trillions of dollars. It seems that it would be cheaper to send all the garbage to a black hole than to dissolve it in acid. In addition, it seems that by solving some environmental problems, we'd create others, and much more serious ones. And instead of a littered planet, you could easily just get a scorched earth and eternal life in gas masks and chemical protection suits. Well, 
I guess I got a little excited. My proposal to destroy the world's garbage with super acid is too radical. Of course, no one wants to risk the future of the planet so much and invest in such a dubious business with a budget comparable to the annual income of the United States. But perhaps humanity has an easier way out. Here is the Japanese village of Kamikatsu. Its residents don't need my crazy super acid ideas. They've found a more reasonable system and even refused to build an incinerator at their own expense. But their voluntary system requires a total conscious discipline. Let us know in the comments, would you agree to sort your garbage into 34 types, take it out at certain hours strictly according to a schedule, personally hand it over to the sorting point, and, in order not to confuse anything, use the 27-page instruction? Or should we go back to the super acid idea?